ready, so let's get our things ready. Um, grab the piece of the yarn in your left hand and pull it over your index finger and hold it, hold the end with your thumb and your third finger. Grab a piece of the yarn and twist it around to create a small loop and secure it with your left hand. Put the needle through the small loop that you just made and grab the piece of the yarn and pull it through the loop. You have created your first chain stitch and we're going to repeat this step. So just tighten it slightly so that the needle won't slip out and then secure it with your left um, thumb again. And then we're just going to keep on grabbing the piece of the yarn and pulling it out of the loop. And let's do this 15 more times total and you're going to end up with 16 total of these little loops called chain stitches. We're now ready to begin our first row, so let's begin by doing three more chain stitches. This is going to set up our beginning of each row. And the first stitch that we're going to be starting with is actually fifth stitches away from where the needle is at. So count to five stitches, wrap the needle around the yarn, and then we're going to go into that fifth stitch. So push the needle through that fifth stitch, grab the piece of the yarn and bring it out that loop. And now you'll see that there are three loops remaining on the needle. Grab the piece of the yarn and we're going to pull it through the first two of the three. And then grab the piece of the yarn again and then pull it through the remaining two. This is the basic stitch that we're going to be using over and over again. You can see that basically there is a base stitch at the bottom and chain stitches coming out of it. So let's do the next one. Just going to wrap the needle around the yarn once and then push through that hole right there. Pull out the piece of the yarn, check to make sure that there's three loops on the needle Grab the piece of the yarn and pull it only through the first two of the three. Grab the yarn again and pull it through the second two of the three. All right, so let's just continue down the row for each of the stitch. And I'll see you when we're at the end of this row. I'm just finishing up the first row, so let's make sure that there's a correct number of stitches. We should have 15, so let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I like to call these chains as columns, so make sure there's 15. And once you confirm that there's 15, turn it around. Hold it in your left hand again, and we're going to set up the second row by starting with the three chain stitches.
All right, so the second row isn't all that much different from the first row, but um, to begin, we're going to be ignoring the first stitch where this chain is coming out of. But instead, we're going to start with the stitch right next to it. And I'm showing you that, that there is like a little space. That's where, um, that's where we're going to be going into for the first stitch. And when you see it from the top vertically, you see that there's like V-shaped stitches running all the way down the row. So we will be putting our needle right below where that V is. Um, let me see if I can show you. So wrap the yarn around once and then go under that V. So you can see on the needle that there is the V stitch right there. And then wrap the yarn around, pull it out that loop. Again, check for those three loops remaining on the needle. Pull the yarn through the first two, and then pull the yarn again through the last two. Let's repeat this again. Wrap the yarn around. Go right under that V in that little space right there. Check for the V on the needle, just to make sure that you're in the right place. Grab the yarn through. Three stitches, so do the first two, and then the last two. So, you know, you get the concept. We're just going to continue down this row, and I'll see you when you're done. Alright, so the last stitch of the second row may seem a little wonky, but all we're going to do is look for the third chain from the first row and put our needle through that third chain. So count to three from the bottom, and then wrap the needle around the yarn once, and go through that third chain. Then pull out the piece of the yarn and do the two by two out of the three stitches for our last stitch. Let's count the stitches in the row again to make sure that they're correct. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Alright, so it's the second row is complete. And let's turn it around to begin our third row. As usual, we're going to start by doing the three chain stitches to set up the row. Ignore the first stitch where the chain is coming out of. We're gonna start from the second. And we'll do our usual double stitch. Can you guess what's coming next? That's right, we're just going to keep on repeating the stitches. And right now we have two rows completed. We're going to keep on doing this until that there's a total of eight of these rows. So we are almost there. We just have to do six more. Get comfortable, put on some nice music, maybe get some tea or coffee, and I'll meet you guys when you have completed eight of these rows. Now that we have completed eight rows, it's time to do the top part of the toast. You can see it's like having two semicircles at the top. So for the top part of the toast, you're going to ignore the first stitch as usual. And we'll count three stitches away from that first stitch. And third stitch is where we're going to be beginning our stitch. 
And unlike last time where we wrapped the yarn only once around the needle, we're going to do it twice now. So wrap the needle around twice and then go into the third stitch. And when you pull out that yarn, you'll see that there's four loops on the needle this time. And we'll do the same thing by pulling through the yarn for the first two of the four, then the second two of the four, and then the last two of the four. Let's do the same stitch, but we're going to be going into the same spot now. So you can see that the length of the chain is longer because we wrapped the yarn around the needle twice before going in now. So we'll do, you know, check that there's four loops now and we'll pull the yarn through the first two, then the second two, and the last two. Let's do it two more times going in to the same spot. So a total of four of these triple stitches will be going into the same hole. Once you've done your four stitches, let's move on to the next stitch and we'll do another four going into that same spot. Remember that we're wrapping the yarn around the needle twice before going in, not just once. Count three stitches and that's what we'll go in next, but instead of bringing the yarn with us, you're just going to put the needle straight through, then hook the yarn out. And there's two loops on the needle now and just pull the first one out of the second loop instead of grabbing the yarn. And you have the first of the semicircles now. For the second semicircle, we'll, we're using a similar pattern again. So count three stitches from where we are. And let's do the same triple stitch four times going into that same third stitch spot. First and then the second two and then the last two. Repeat the same. Um, get some more yarn. <laughs> Let's repeat the same stitch into the same spot. Mm, you see I messed up here because there's only three loops. <laughs> That's how you know. Should have wrapped around twice to get the four. I get it. two more stitches in the same spot. Mm -hmm. 
After the four stitches, I don't know if you can guess what we're gonna do next. Um, just gonna do the same four triple stitches going into the next stitch now. Once you've finished the second set of the four stitches, we're going to find the third chain of the previous row like we've been doing before. And instead of grabbing the yarn, just put the needle right through and hook the yarn out. And get the first loop through the second loop again, again without grabbing the yarn. And when you pull out the yarn, you have the inside piece of the first toast. So now we can get started on the crust part of the bread with the brown yarn. Actually before we get started on the brown yarn, let's uh, snip off the yarn. So get a pair of scissors, cut the yarn, Pull the yarn out from the loop and tighten it slightly so that it's all secure. And now we're ready for the crust. Let's go ahead and grab the piece of the brown yarn now. Put it over your index finger, um, securing with your thumb and your third finger like we did in the beginning. Put it behind where the last stitch was coming out of. It's where the eighth row and the top part of the toast meet. And pick a stitch that's in that area, doesn't have to be perfect, and put your needle through. And then hook onto the brown yarn and pull it through. Let's do it one more time like you're doing a chain stitch. And now the brown piece of yarn is attached to the toast. Pull on the uh, piece in the back of slightly the uh, end of the yarn so that it's more securely attached. And we'll deal with these stray end pieces as we go along so that we don't have to deal with them separately later. Just try to hold them uh, like to lay flat along this edge. Now that the yarn has been attached, we're ready to begin our crust part. Um, so before we were trying to get the stitch be um, right below where the v-stitch was but this time it's going to be that space, uh, the large space that's between the two stitches of this row. So we're going to do the same double stitch. So wrap the needle around the yarn, pull it through and get them through the first two and then the second two of the three loops. And let's do it one more time going into the same space. It's the little hole between the two columns. So. Check for the three loops, pull through the first two, then the second two. And this is the pattern that's going to continue for each of these rows. So you're just going to do two double stitches going into each of these rows around the last column essentially, going into the space that's not the V but between the two columns. So you have a lot more room to work with. <laughs> and hold on to these stray end pieces so that the yarn kind of like wraps it around as you work it down. 
it may feel a little awkward and clumsy in your hand, just do your best to lay them flat against the edge of the toast. So I'll see you guys after you have done, I think, a total of 16 stitches because you're going two stitches per row. So keep on working till you get to the last row. And for the last row, you're going to do two stitches on the vertical side and then turn it around and do two more stitches on the horizontal side. So a total of four stitches going into that same corner spot. For this side of the toast, you're just going to do one double stitch going into each of this spot. So it's the space that's between the two columns. Only doing one double stitch. So keep working through this row. As I said, just one stitch per of spot and then Make sure to do four for the corner and then double going back up vertically. I've got the crust going all the way around, just have to do the top part. Let's get my needle ready again. And starting from the right side, we are going to be following like a one, two, one, two, one, two pattern. So for the first um, stitch, it's a one double stitch, and then two going into the same spot, then one, then two, then one, then two. And for the middle parts, we're just gonna do short stitches and do the double stitches again on the other side. So start with a double stitch. And for the next stitch, we're going to do two of the same stitches going into the same spot. The second time, and go only doing a single one now. And then the next one is double. Then single. Oh, can be quite slippery. Don't panic, just, <laughs> just have to rehook. And then double. Now we are doing the short stitches, so instead of bringing the yarn with us, just put the needle straight through, pull out the yarn, and grab the yarn again, and pull it through the two loops. Let's do it two more times, so a total of three of these short stitches. And for the center, there is a small space that's right in the center. And we're just gonna do another short stitch right there. And then do three more on the left side. Remember, you're not bringing the yarn in with you when you go in, just the needle. For the left side, it's the mirror image pattern, so instead of one, uh, two, it's two, one, two, one, two, one. 
So let's start with having two double stitches going in the same spot. It's the first one and then go in again into the same spot. The next stitch is a single one. So only once. And then two times going into the same spot. Then a single one. Just two stitches going in the same spot for the third time. And the last stitch, only one going in that last spot. To close up the crust, uh, let's go to where we first began our brown yarn and pick a stitch that's at like the very edge. It doesn't have to be exact, but just pick a V-shaped stitch. Stick your needle through. You can sort of see the V that's on the needle right now. And let's hook the yarn through that loop. And instead of grabbing the yarn again, just slip that first stitch through the second loop. And let's uh, put our needle out. And there you go. You made your first piece of toast. You could end your project right now or you can create another piece of the toast and put the two together for a much thicker, fluffier toast. It's more plush with two pieces. If you're gonna do the two pieces, uh, try to keep the sizes of the toast uh, similar to one another. Harder to tell, but the one on the left is bigger than the one on the right. This is due to the tension of the yarn. So if you make really tight stitches, then the individual stitch is smaller. And if you do loose stitches, then the individual stitch will be longer, and so the overall product will be longer, even if you're not making any changes to the pattern. If one is a lot bigger than the other one, it's harder to bind the two. They kind of slip around. So try to keep your stitch tension consistent. So welcome back. While off camera, I made two more pieces of toasts. Uh, one is bigger to fit the big toast. And the other one is smaller to fit the smaller toast. As I said earlier, I made looser stitches to make the bigger toast, and I used much tighter stitches to make the smaller toast. And let's bind these together now. Turn the toast to the side to take a look at the vertical side, and you will notice the V-shaped stitches that's running along the side all the way down. So. We will take the needle and push it right under those V's and we're going to do it through two pieces at the same time, right under those V's and when we pull out the yarn it's going to help us bind these pieces together. You can pick any spot to begin the binding process. I just like to start from here because this is where I usually end and begin my stitches. So I'm just going to push the needle through both pieces at a random V shaped stitch. And let's grab the piece of the yarn, holding it over your index finger to attach it. So let's grab the yarn and Pull it through the two V-shaped stitches and let's make another chain stitch. So 
starting from the next stitch, just pick another V-shaped stitches. Then you can see that there's three kinds of stitches on there, including the two V-shaped stitches. Pull the yarn through the V-shaped stitches. Grab the yarn again and pull it through the two stitches. And let's just keep on repeating this step until you've gone all the way around the toast. You don't have to do every stitch, you can kind of skip over, it's up to you. Just make sure that the two pieces are bonded together. All right, so I've gone all the way around and then now I'm back to where I was and the last and the last stitch instead of grabbing to pull it out again, I'm just going to pull it through. And then taking the scissors pull it all the way out. Hold them tightly so that it's all done and there you have it it's complete it's, and they're very secure and held together with the leftover strings um, what I usually do is I just kind of I try to pull it in between the two pieces of bread like as much as I can so I would Kind of grab the thread through and do it a couple times. Until that's a bit shorter. And try to stick it in so that the ends are tucked inside. Let's repeat the same process to make sure that we get rid of all the stray pieces and that they're hidden inside the toast. And there it is your very own piece of toast scrubby. Yay!